Okay, so this is my second try at this. So the first time the microphone didn't work well. Um, this is how to make snowflakes or just ornaments, if you want to call it a snowflake, out of text for uh, words and names so that you can easily make something that's pretty and um, it becomes a customized ornament if you decide to do someone's name. So I've seen a lot of people asking about this and I've been making a few of my own. So I thought I'd share a quick uh, tutorial for Illustrator that makes a super easy way to do this. So uh, whenever I do a design, I like to try and keep my font live in a file. So this is an AI file. This is my kind of my source file, whereas this is my finished um, ornament that go goes into my SVG file. So here you can see it's live type. I copy that, and I'm going to make a new document. So I do 19.2 by 10.9 on a landscape because that's pretty much what the bed of the laser is. So therefore, uh, you can maximize your design by knowing that the artboard itself is the limits of your design. So here I'm going to paste piece back in. And um, this is something where I'm using Buena Vista regular font. Uh, any font like Samantha Craft that's got a lot of these really pretty flourishes and glyphs um, go in get it to where you like it, and then decide, okay, this looks pretty good to me, I'm going to try it. So um, for those of you who don't know, if you do have glyphs in a font, if you double click the word to get the text file, or to, sorry, the text tool, then you'll see the other um, options that you have here. So we could change it up to that, for example. And you should also be able to open up a glyphs panel, which... Uh, of course, I'm not remembering what the icon is right now. But anyway, it'll open up a big window so that you can see it and you can uh, actually look at them all together. Um, yeah. I'm not going to worry about it right now. But <laughs> I'll go into that on another one. Um, so for this, now, if you've decided that you like how this looks and you want to see what it's going to look like as a snowflake, come over to the Rotate tool and you hold Alt to change your Rotate point right there that they have it um, out a little bit further because you can see this is a tall uh, piece so the intersections that you're going to have um, if you do it too tight to your letter then it's going to be um, really hard to read once you're done so I like to pull it out a little bit and then I'll test it so let's try right there so remember you hold alt and click and then that gives you your um, your offset so 60 degrees is going to give us six uh, spokes on our flake because there's 180 degree circle. So you preview and you copy, and this will show you how tight it is together. And that looks pretty good to me. So now, for my other four spokes, I hold Control and then tap D for duplicate. So you just have it go right around the circle. And after that, because this is live type, this is why I was saying that I save another file um, as an AI file so I can easily get back to this font um, without having to guess out of all my thousands of fonts, uh, you know, like if you have your font set up, which one was it? No, save it for yourself. Okay, so we're going to go up to type, create outlines, and this gives us our shapes now instead of live type, unite, so that all of our overlaying letters actually uh, join together. You can see that there. We'll zoom in a little bit so you can see that now it's all one piece. Now, one of the things I like to do when I'm doing this is if you look and see all these anchor points here, every anchor point that you have actually takes time for the Glowforge to process. So one thing that I do is I go up to Object, Path, and Simplify, and it'll tell you how much is simplified. So you can see here, this is 2,226 points, and it's now down to 600. So that's something really good for your file size and your... Um, you're processing, but you can see that when you actually look at this, it's simplified all these anchors, but it still looks exactly the same. So sometimes it changes a little bit, so you want to be careful with it. Now we're going to go to Object Path, Offset Path. I usually use about 10 points. You can type it in as just 10 PT, and it'll convert for you. I like to do round versus miter, because miter has these little sharp spikes that it gets sometimes. So I like everything rounded out and kind of soft. Now, once you get these shapes, you want to do the exact same thing that we did before when you unite. That gives us one piece that then we're going to turn into a stroke. And that's your cut line. I personally like to keep my files um, as 
uniform as I can, so I always put my cut lines of red, my engraves in pink. Now for this, um, we want to add probably the hanger hole here. I don't see anything that makes it really easy to say, okay, that's going to be um, a good spot in any of these cutouts to actually hang it from. So what I do is I just go to the Shape tool, the Ellipse, hold Alt again, and you'll get the center of your circle. So I like to do it somewhere around there. I do a 0.21 circle. Oh, one of the things we didn't do is we didn't look and see how big our snowflake is right now. That's a little over five and a half inches, so I'm actually going to size that down to four inches, which is kind of a standard size, three and a half to four inches. And then that way, now we can match our circle for the hanger. What I do personally is I do a 0.21, then I copy, and I paste in front. So that's control C, control F, and then that gives you my second circle. And I just eyeball it down. It'll show you how far you're going in. So I like to do 0 0.08 to 0 0.12, depending. Um, it's nice enough to be able to get a ribbon through, but if they have a string, then it doesn't feel like it's too gappy. All right. So one of the things that uh, happens when you do your Unite is that if you notice, all of this is selected because it's a group now. So I just double click and go into the group so I can select this, and now you see that all the black is not selected. I paste my circles back in select my outer outlines on both, and unite again. So now, one of the things that I like to do, just simply because the laser doesn't really like sharp corners, is I take the A tool, the white arrow, and I select the anchors over here. Now, you can see this little dot that appears, that's actually to add a curve to this. So you can see how sharp it is right now, and I actually want to go in and just pull it back just a little bit and soften that. So there you go. So that is how you make a word ornament or a name ornament in Illustrator um, very quickly. And I'll be posting this video. Please feel free to ask questions.